Seperti kata pepatah Inggeris, a picture paints a thousand words. Atau gambar meninggalkan kesan yang lebih mendalam daripada perkataan. Namun bagi saya, apa yang terakam ni mengesahkan apa yang terjadi pada saat dan ketika itu saja. Ia tidak semestinya memaparkan kisah sebenar di sebalik sesuatu sejarah yang berlaku. Ia menunjukkan bagaimana kita gembira dan berduka. Dari bencana yang paling dahsyat kepada usaha menyelamat yang berani. Setiap kejadian berlaku secara tidak sengaja. Setiap gambar memaparkan rangkaian peristiwa yang berakhir dengan kejadian tersebut. Saya akan cuba memberitahu apa sebenarnya yang berlaku yang menyebabkan peristiwa ini. Apa yang penting bagi saya ialah gambar-gambar uh, ini merakamkan kejadian-kejadian yang ikonik yang uh, membentuk identiti kita sebagai warga Singapura. Kita ingat pada waktu ia giat dijalankan, pada mesej yang disampaikan, pada lagu-lagunya dan juga pada maskot. Zaman di mana pelbagai kempen dilancarkan dan dilaksanakan. Ini adalah episod yang berlainan dari episod-episod sebelumnya. So if we go back to the time when the uh, campaign was uh, starting, the population was about one and a half million. It, it was uh, growing at almost three percent a year, which doubles the population in 25 years. What like a big war zone. It was crazy. Each day when you walk into the antenatal clinic, when I walked in there, I see a sea of uh, faces of pregnant women looking up at you, you know, expectancy. You feel like, say, thanks girls, I'm going home. <laughs> you feel like walking up. It's so busy. And throwing things, littering would be a common thing. What they could throw on the ground in a kampung, they're not gonna, when they throw it out of the window, it hit someone below. No country, no government on this planet would say that um, they do not interfere or do they not uh, actively intervene in trying to um, into the families, into the private domestic realms of society. What caught me was your idea about the universal sign language for kindness, which I didn't know. I, I mean, I have to admit, but that's, I think that's something that can become, that people will pick up. Adakah masyarakat kita benar-benar kurang berbudi? Inilah satu ketika yang masih segar di ingatan kita. Kempen Budi Bahasa yang antara lain menggalakkan kita untuk selalu mengucapkan terima kasih dan juga mengamalkan Budi Bahasa dalam apa jua keadaan. Saya masih ingat beberapa kempen yang dilancarkan daripada tahun 70-an hingga sekarang ini. Antaranya kempen tingkatkan daya penghasilan, kempen bertutur bahasa Inggeris dengan sempurna, kempen amalkan gaya hidup sihat, kempen keselamatan jalan raya dan sebagainya. Adakah kempen-kempen ini meninggalkan kesan kepada saya? Uh, mungkin secara tidak langsung kerana tanpa disedari atau tidak, saya uh, melakukan apa yang digalakkan melalui kempen-kempen ini. Mungkin ramai yang tidak ketahui tapi kita pernah juga ada kempen anti rambut panjang untuk kaum lelaki. Pada masa yang sama, kita juga tahu tentang sikap setengah warga Singapura yang mungkin kurang disenangi. Antaranya mereka tidak suka beratur dengan betul, mereka suka membuang sampah, sikap kiasu dan sebagainya. Lah. Tapi adakah kita ni sebuah masyarakat yang tidak berbudi bahasa sehinggakan kita perlu kempen-kempen ini semua? Kempen-kempen yang dilancarkan pada tahun-tahun 60-an dan 70-an dikendalikan oleh pelbagai kementerian. Dan terdapat juga beberapa kempen lain yang mungkin kita juga tidak pernah ketahui. Hello. Salah satu kempen yang paling lama dijalankan dan masih ada sehingga hari ini adalah kempen Perbudi Bahasa. Dimulakan pada tahun 1979, 
Ia bertujuan menggalakkan orang ramai supaya menerapkan budi bahasa dalam kehidupan seharian mereka. Encik Baskara Naya bertugas di Kementerian Budaya pada masa itu. Pasukannya berdepan dengan satu tugas yang mencabar dalam mengendalikan kempen tersebut. Selain menyediakan risalah dan juga poster, mereka juga memikul tanggungjawab menggalakkan seluruh warga Singapura untuk mengamalkan budi bahasa. And this, of course, in this would be nationwide produced by private sector uh, and and sold to tourists and to and then children also started buying them and and use them as part of their either school activities. It's so nice to be courteous. So there were many things that needed to be looked into. There were uh, people moving from kampongs into high-rise apartments. Uh, People who were previously in enclaves based on racial communities were now supposed to intermingle and mix with one another. Throwing things, littering would be a common thing. What they could throw on the ground in a kampong, they're not going to, when they throw it out of the window, it hit someone below. When we had singer as a mascot, uh, we allowed manufacturers to literally run the campaign because they manufactured the product. I think it was, in a sense, almost serendipity that we let the manufacturers drive the currency campaign in terms of the distribution of the materials. Thereafter, it took a life of its own, became more so the campaign slogan, or rather the campaign mascot, which was for the first time used in a campaign, became almost endearing to the public itself. Sedang Singapura Maju, perumahan dan cara kita menjalani kehidupan seharian juga turut berubah. Dan kempen-kempen yang dilancarkan pada tahun-tahun awal pembentukan Singapura bertujuan untuk membantu masyarakat menangani perubahan ini. Dan terdapat juga kempen-kempen yang diingatkan kepada kita berulang-ulang kali. There's really no ending to being courteous. You cannot turn and say, on this day, I become courteous, it's over. It's a daily interaction and people are driving cars and when you get into a car, the behavior changes, right? So... Because it is an ongoing behavioural changes based on situations, so repetition was a very important thing. We worked on the basis, I think, that it will probably take two to three decades of repetition before we can see it become part of the social fabric. Sejak 1950, terdapat sekurang-kurangnya 100 kempen yang dilancarkan di Singapura. Dari jumlah itu, Sekitar 20 kempen masih lagi wujud sehingga kini. Dr. Liu Kai Kun pernah menjalankan kajian mengenai warisan masyarakat dalam sejarah Singapura dan Malaysia. Aside from Probably good strategy in marketing and public promotion, getting uh, more attractive posters out, you know, visually uh, captivating ones. It needs to fit an underlying uh, practical uh, purpose within society. That it needs to be uh, pragmatic for one. It needs to convince the people or the audience being targeted that this would actually improve your life significantly. No country, no government on this planet would say that um, they do not interfere or do they not uh, actively intervene in trying to um, into the families, into the private domestic realms of society. Kempen-kempen yang dilancarkan ini bukan saja cuba untuk mengawal tabiat kita. Ada juga kempen yang cuba mengawal cara kita hidup dan berkeluarga. Saya masih ingat satu kempen yang berlaku semasa saya kecil lagi. Ia merupakan satu kempen yang meninggalkan kesan kepada masyarakat tempatan hampir 40 tahun kemudian. Sama ada kita sukakannya ataupun sebaliknya, kempen-kempen yang dilancarkan menggalakkan kita supaya bersikap lebih sivil, mengamalkan kebersihan, dan mungkin juga menggalakkan kita untuk menyimpan rambut pendek. Dan terdapat juga satu kempen yang cuba juga memberitahu kita cara terbaik untuk berkeluarga. Sewaktu saya membesar, ramai di antara kawan-kawan saya yang datang daripada keluarga yang kecil. 
Ini semua kesan daripada kempen ini yang dijalankan. Apa yang saya ketahui, apabila sebuah keluarga tu telah mempunyai dua orang anak, anak yang ketiga ini tidak diberikan keutamaan dalam pendidikan. Bermakna mereka tidak diberikan keutamaan untuk mendapatkan tempat di sekolah. Dikenali sebagai Stop at Two, kempen ini bertujuan menggalakkan penduduk Singapura mempunyai keluarga yang kecil. Kempen ini dilancarkan pada tahun 1972 dan dikendalikan Lembaga Perancangan Keluarga dan Penduduk Singapura. Ia adalah satu langkah berjaga-jaga memandangkan jumlah penduduk Singapura semakin bertambah. population explosion was around a lot of people were using that term so you know emotional kinds of ways of looking at this and um, uh, so but but it, it was important to bring the birth rate down but I think what a lot of people didn't realize is there were certain forces that were going to help bring it down anyway you know without the campaign I mean one thing is that uh, there had been a lot of progress in helping children to survive and, you know, in lowering the mortality rates. And once the children are surviving, you know, the reason why people had so many children in the past was that, you know, some of them died and it was a sort of an insurance thing. You, you have five or six, if one or two die, well, you've still, you know, still got the, quite a few left. Profesor Gavin Jones sudah pun mengkaji dan menganalisa demografi penduduk Singapura sejak 9 tahun yang lalu. So if we go back to the time when the uh, campaign was uh, starting the population was about 1 and a half million it, it was uh, growing at almost 3% a year which doubles the population in 25 years. So the way people were seeing it uh, okay double in 25 years that would go to 3 3 million in uh, 25 years time and then to 6 million in 50 years time um, and maybe you know even bigger beyond that unless the birth rate came down so that was the way it was seen just the simplicity of the uh, slogans uh, first of all they started off Singapore wants small families later you know boy or girl two is, uh, two is enough um, so you know these were simple slogans with a message and I think that they were cleverly done and that they they did affect the way people thought you know you went on for another another 10 years before the the policy really got changed very much and um, I, I think all, that was almost inevitable given the speed of the uh, decline in fertility but it would have been better if they had you know relaxed those policies earlier uh, relaxed the uh, slogans and things because you know almost overnight it went from um, um, stop at two to oh isn't it a great thing to have many children and I think people get a bit confused about, <laughs> about changes in messages like that. Kempen anti rambut panjang pada golongan lelaki yang sering dikaitkan dengan budaya hippie dilancarkan pemerintah pada tahun 1970. Lelaki yang berambut panjang antara lain tidak mendapat keistimewaan dalam pekerjaan dan juga mungkin tidak dibenarkan masuk ke beberapa bangunan pemerintah. Kempen daya penghasilan dilancarkan pada awal tahun 80-an bertujuan menggalakkan amalan-amalan yang dapat meningkatkan daya penghasilan negara. Antara yang dicadangkan semasa kempen itu adalah mengurangkan masa berehat bagi para perokok. Maskot Timi The Productivity B juga diperkenalkan pada kempen tersebut. Dan kempen Stop Act 2 ini juga mengakibatkan langkah-langkah drastik dilakukan. Dr. Paul Tan, seorang doktor pakar puan, melakukan proses pemandulan kepada ramai golongan ibu pada tahun-tahun 70-an sebagai sebahagian daripada program perancangan keluarga. Sepanjang tempoh kempen Stop Act 2, dianggarkan 4,000 wanita setahun secara sukarela meminta proses pemandulan dilakukan ke atas mereka sebaik sahaja mereka melahirkan anak kedua. They introduce the new clause if you have the third and subsequent babies and if you or your husband do not undergo sexual sterilization that child will have no priority in school. And I think that clinched the whole campaign because in Singapore, education seems to be a very important 
all mothers started reacting and our sterilization very high. Even among Malays, they start offering themselves for sterilization. Our role was uh, to operate on the women, to do the sterilization. And most times we do what we call postpartum sterilization, which means the moment they deliver, within 24 hours, we sterilize the woman. So we were very busy because usually we were doing sterilization not more than five uh, a month. And now we find that we were doing about five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 10 a day. Maybe a few of them express regrets, especially those that, you know, when the husband dies or they get divorced and they say, I made a mistake. Or sometimes, you know, uh, being a mother, this feeling of wanting to have another baby. You know, KK has a huge reputation of being uh, the baby factory of the world. We were dealing with something like, what, a hundred over births a day, you know, in the hospital. And the reasons for that, first, the fertility rate was high in Singapore. Two, it was the only hospital that offered delivery services. And so the whole place was just a mad, mad house. Malangnya, apa yang dianggap sebagai huraian kepada masalah pada waktu itu, kini menimbulkan satu masalah yang baru. If you look at all of the East Asian countries, I mean Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong and so on, they've all got this issue of very, very low fertility at this point. The, the common features that they have is that they're all, you know, industrialized um, uh, countries, high education, a lot of opportunities for women in the workforce, um, very urbanized, you know, all, all those features they share. So irrespective of whether there had been this campaign we would have found ourselves in this situation today in Singapore but there, there is a related issue of whether the fall in fertility helped to achieve the economic development and the educational development and I, I think it, it certainly did contribute and there's a lot of evidence again around the world that um, uh, when when the fertility is as high as it was in Singapore, that is a barrier to some aspects of of development. Ia adalah zaman yang berbeza. Namun, saya tidak dapat merasakan kesan kempen-kempen yang dilancarkan pada masa itu. Jadi, seperti kata pepatah Inggeris, if you can't beat them, join them. Gambar-gambar ini banyak menceritakan tentang sejarah negara kita dan juga detik-detik yang ikonik. Untuk merasakan sendiri kesan kempen yang diadakan di Singapura, saya diberikan cabaran untuk cuba menghasilkan satu kempen budi bahasa yang baru yang belum pernah difikirkan sebelum ini. Apa yang dapat saya lakukan adalah satu kempen yang menggunakan maskot bagi kempen ini, Singa. Saya mendapatkan bantuan dari agensi pengiklanan yang sering melakukan kempen bagi pergerakan budi bahasa Singapura SKM sebelum bertemu dengan para pegawai SKM itu sendiri. I also you know, take into consideration that you know uh, the perception. I mean, I try uh, again trying to make uh, kindness and also sing the the, the icon and uh, the mascot uh, more than uh, Singapore icon. was your idea about the universal sign language for kindness which I didn't know I, I mean I have to admit but that's I think that's something that can become that people will pick up at least for me personally I've always wondered you know how we can make singer come more to life um, because it's an icon that represents the, the movement and make it global uh, you know there must be some kind of transition 
uh, whether it's visual or destination uh, oriented. Sedang Singapura membangun pesat pada tahun-tahun 80-an. Kita secara tidak langsung juga menggunakan tenaga yang berlebihan. Disebabkan itu, kempen mengurangkan penggunaan tenaga dilancarkan. Satu lagi kempen yang dilancarkan pada masa itu adalah kempen Wash Your Hands yang menggalakkan orang ramai mengamalkan kebersihan. Kementerian Kesihatan juga melancarkan beberapa kempen memerangi penyakit-penyakit yang boleh menjejas penduduk tempatan. Kalau kita lihat pada kempen yang paling berjaya sejauh ini iaitu kempen berbudi bahasa. Adakah dengan kempen ini kita sebagai sebuah masyarakat uh, kini menjadi lebih berbudi bahasa? Pada pendapat saya, ya. Tapi dengan perubahan masyarakat yang ada sekarang ini, saya rasa lebih banyak uh, usaha-usaha perlu dipertingkatkan lagi. This campaign should still be promoted. Um, in spite of the fact that we may seem to be a bit more educated, we are more well-traveled. But I think old habits still die hard. I think the underlying cause of maybe such um, objective of such campaigns is to perhaps to let people feel that they have ownership of their society. Kalau kita lihat pada kempen-kempen yang dilanjakan sekarang ini, saya rasa ia kurang berjaya berbanding dengan kempen-kempen pada masa lalu. Mungkin uh, kerana petanda ataupun benchmark kejayaan kempen-kempen ini telah pun berubah. Tapi saya sendiri rasakan uh, ia kurang berjaya kerana uh, kita ni telah pun terdedah dengan pelbagai kempen. Sehingga kan kempen-kempen yang ada sekarang ini tidak meninggalkan kesan yang diharapkan. Someday